Hi, Ed Yeoman, Radiman Manufacturing. Uh, just a quick tip on how to keep your liquid cylinders uh, at your facility and in top shape. A simple little preventative maintenance uh, tip that's really easy to do. You know, this liquid cylinders, uh, portable liquid cylinders, DOT4L design. Uh, you can see on the schematic here on the right, they've got an inner vessel that's got the cryogenic liquid in them, a stainless steel shell on the outside that you, you touch and make contact with. And in between there is super insulation, but there's also an extremely strong vacuum. And it was James Dewar back in the late 1800s that had had no, known that working with cryogenic liquids by adding that vacuum, that dead air space in between the the uh, cryogenic liquid and the outside uh, ambient temperature uh, greatly enhanced the insulating value of the cylinder. And if that cylinder doesn't have that strong vacuum, um, it really kind of renders it inoperable. The, the liquid normally is going to lose one to two percent a day um, in a liquid cylinder, and without the vacuum, it's going to lose its its contents within you know a day. Um, it's just going to be boiling off. It's almost like pouring it pouring liquid nitrogen or oxygen or argon into a bucket and letting it sit there and boil off. It dissipates pretty quickly. Here's a simple tip. All the cylinders now today, all the OEM, OEM manufacturers uh, come with a vacuum port welded onto the top of the crown of the cylinder. And um, some of the earlier ones had a pinch tube design, but, you know, for quite some time now, they've all come out with a vacuum port on them. There's some different sizes. If the cylinder's been out for repair, there may be some different vacuum valve diameters. So it's always smart to measure the OD of the vacuum valve to make sure you get the right cap to put back on it. But you can see with the construction here of the vacuum valve on the left that that they have an O-ring design in there. There's specialized equipment called an operator that'll go on there that'll pull up that valve and hook it to a pump and they'll 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 establish a new vacuum. And if you don't have that equipment, it can be rather expensive to have to send that out to be repaired. So, you know, you see these O-rings on these, these valves in here. Um, if they sit out in the yard and they, and they, they get hit by the ultraviolet rays of the sun and, and plugged with dirt, um, those O-rings in that valve can dry out and you can slowly lose the vacuum quality in that inner vessel of the cylinder. So when a cylinder rolls through to be filled, um, just have your people notice that the cap has fallen off. They, they get, like I said, get hit with ultraviolet. They get cracked. They, they'll fall off. Um, you know, customer, curious customers will take them off. But uh, if, it's, if there's dirt in there, clean it out. Um, you know, be, be careful with um, O2 compatibility. Use some O2 safe grease, like the Crytox grease, Radiman cells, a general purpose lubricant and a small little two ounce tube. Um, it won't break the bank. Uh, put a simple little bead around um, that uh, that seal and that and that vacuum valve. Pop a new cap over the top of it and send it out the door. That'll just keep those O-rings from drying out. Hopefully, keep the vacuum established in your cylinders. Keep the cylinders in your yard so you don't have to send them out and keep money in your pocket. Because uh, there's bad cylinder having a bad day. Keep your cylinders from looking like this one that's having an awful day here and needs to be sent out to have a new vacuum put on it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I'm Ed Yeoman, Radman Manufacturing. I do sales in the Northeast. That's my email. If you need to contact me, please reach out to Radman. Go to our website. We've got all the components to help you with this simple little tip. Follow us on LinkedIn. Have a good day. Thank you.